Hey everyone, it's Jonathan from Leica with another video on Cyclone 3DR. In this video we're going to talk about this profile 2D inspection tool up here, or what I like to call it is just a cross-section analysis for roadways. So you can see these three tools up here, we've got a picture of a tunnel for 3D inspection, so that's, that would be if you are doing tunnel cross-sections. And we have just standard profile extraction and then 2D inspection. So what these tools do is they're actually a combination of some other tools over here. Uh, they're a combination of the section extraction and then an analysis tool uh, comparing section versus section. One other added feature that they have is they set up a uh, they set up a grid for us to bring into a CAD platform that we can export as a DXF or send directly to AutoCAD. So what we need to do these uh, calculations is first we need two surface messages. Meshes. So in this case, we've got our existing roadway, our design surface, and you need a, a center line. You need an alignment point. And the reason you need this is you need something for these cross sections to follow to be based off of. So you have to have all three selected to start the command. So we'll pick all three of them. And you can see now we get all three of these lit up. We're doing profile 2D inspection. So this is a, is a guided workflow that sort of does... Um, it walks us through individual steps that we set the parameters for. So first we've got our reference and our measure, which is the measured terrain and then the project, and then we've got our alignment. So all those are set. Uh, if we need to, we can reverse it. You can see it'll reverse the direction of these arrows. Right now we're starting here and working our way along the road this way. So uh, this is all based off of our uh, what our station numbers are gonna be called. So in this case I have STA, some people might use MP, uh, this is just going to be the labeling for your individual stations. And then this is the offset for your uh, your text for this. So we can say locally perpendicular or vertical. Uh, in my case, I'm going to do locally perpendicular because I want it to be perpendicular to this line rather than uh, vertical on the z-axis. So I say next. And then it's going to be asking us for our interval. So in our case, right now I have it set to 10 meter cross sections. Uh, we might want to thin that out a little bit. Let me make this uh, 20 meter cross sections. Now, the other option, if you've used other tools, uh, if you use the cross section tool before, you'll be familiar with this. But what we have the option to do is we could actually set a range. So we could say, give me a custom range. And then we can actually use these plus signs here to pick a spot. So if we just wanted cross sections, say, on this section right here, we could just pick a spot and say, I want to go from here to here. And you see it automatically populates those distances for us. Um, in our case though, I'm going to do all over. I want to do the entire line. So one other option that we have here is the pass-through option. The way that this functions right now, without it checked, our cross-section will start at 0 and then we'll have one at 20, 30, or 20, 40, 60, 80 as we go along the, uh, the line here based off of the distance from this uh, start point. If we say pass-through, we can say, I want a specific cross-section to be at, a, I don't know, we could say 15, 15 meters. Then we would have 15, 35, and so on. Um, it's just ensuring that we're going to have one cross-section pass through a specific point. We can also select it. So if we had a specific starting point that we wanted our cross-sections to start at, we could click here, and you can see we could have one start at 81.5 meters here. But in our case, I want to do the full range. And I'll just say insert after this. So you can see that all of my stationing and where my cross sections are going to be has been installed here. So I've got one at zero, I've got one at 20, I've got one um, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120 as they go along here. Uh, and everything here populates for us, showing us what we've got. So as long as that looks good to you, uh, we go to the next step. Now the next step is asking us for a layout, and what it's, what this layout is actually going to be doing is um, creating a, a grid of like a CAD grid basically for us to look at from a profile view where we're going to see the two cross sections compared, uh, and we have we have a grid underlay that we can use. Um, so this is just changing the layout. So you've got a horizontal, vertical, and grid layout. I like this grid layout uh, personally. I'll say compute on there, and you can see how it how it populates it. But if you want, you can change the way the layout looks. So I'm going to keep this grid layout. You can see here, it's got my two cross sections. So I've got my design cross section here, the median there, and then I've got a cross section or, or my uh, 
base data for my existing surface. So the next thing that I'm going to do is just click next on that if I'm happy with this. Now what it's asking is to do the actual comparison. So the first thing it's asking for is what direction we want to run the comparison in. So right now it would be a straight vertical uh, 2D. Since we picked 2D instead of 3D, this is what we have, is an inspection direction vertical. So this would give me all of my vertical offsets of cut and fill that I would need to add in these cross-section areas. So the other options I have are I can remove points that are further away. So like in this case where I've got data that's not, you know, I've got data that's further than a meter between these two, uh, I can get rid of that because I don't have any comparison data that's going to be out here. And then I can also uh, remove points that are too close. So if I don't want comparison data where I have an overlap like this, I can check that box on. I'm going to leave it unchecked though. And then uh, I also have compare with regular step. If you leave this unchecked, the way that 3DR works, and it will compare at the vertices of these lines. So everywhere there's a node, it'll do a vertical comparison. But if you leave compare with regular step, you can actually set the distance at which it's going to pull a vertical uh, measurement. And we'll see that here in a second. So we can say compute here. And now you can see that we have all of the distances uh, the vertical distances, and then it's, uh, it has an over and under. If it's over, it's red. If it's if it's under, it's blue. In our case, and then every meter we have a, dis uh, a distance measurement. So if I want to uh, increase that or decrease that, I can just work this slider, compute it. Now we have more distance. Uh, you can see here it is based on the distance of the line, not the horizontal distance in total. So um, bear that in mind when you have something like this. You know, you're, it's going to be more evenly distributed on straight sections. Um, but if you're happy with that, you can see it in the 3D view as well here where it's populating those distances for us. And you can say next. The last thing it's going to ask us is how we want to set up our grid. So you can see what it did for us here is it populated our actual background grid. And while I'm thinking of this, while we have our grid open, I'm going to start my Civil 3D up here. And it allows you to basically change the cosmetics of your grid in the way that it appears. Um, typically, what I like to do in this case is, uh, you know, you have these subdivisions in the grid. I like to either change this down to two subdivisions to give me kind of a halfway point between a meter here, or even just one, just to give me my major lines only, so I can know that that's all to scale. Um, and then the other options that you have, um, you can see here, we would turn off. We could turn off our coordinates for our, our point. We could turn off the name, the station name, our access point. Uh, and so on and so forth. And then we can also control the number of decimals. In this case, I might turn that down to two for our, uh, for our measurement. So you can see that we have two options here now. We can export this directly to DXF from here, or we can use our send to function. So if we have a CAD drawing open, which in my, in my case I do here now, um, the key with this, if you're going to use the send to function, is that you have to have the drawing open. So you have to have an actual drawing open. You can't just be sitting on the start screen here. But if I say send to, you can see it picks up my active drawing. So I've got AutoCAD 2022 drawing one. I say send to here. And now you can see that all of that grid data has been imported straight into AutoCAD. And it is to scale. Let me get my bearings for a second. Find my dimension tool. So if I pull an aligned dimension on here, you'll see that these, this grid is actually half a meter between those lines that I that I exported. So um, that's that's the way that that functions when you're using a send to command. We'll go back to 3DR. We're happy with this, then we can just exit it. And then we have all of our data here in the 3D scene that we can visualize as well. So if we were if we wanted to look at an individual cross section, we might hide our surfaces and then take a look here. So that's how the profile three the two D inspection works. Uh, you get all your stations exported here if you wanna if you wanna send them out to CAD in a different way, and then you also get each individual average distance profile reported here, and then you can cycle through your uh, individual stations. They show up in the report tab as individual pages, uh, as well if you want to print this out as a PDF. But that's it. So uh, I hope you found this helpful, and I will see you in the next one.